So in today's lecture, we are going to sort of focus more on constraint optimization problem. So how can we potentially convert a constraint optimization problems to unconstrained optimization problem? Using Lagrangian, right? So we know that like if, if this is the optimization problem that we are going to be working with, the primal optimization problem subject to some inequality constraints of this form. and equality constraints so you can basically formulate the lagrangian for this optimization problem in terms of the primal variable x and the dual variables lambda and nu and this looks something like this right i equal this for zero. Okay. So, this is a Lagrangian and how do we define Lagrange dual for this? So, first of all it is a function of lambda and u right your dual variables lambda and u and this is defined as x the Lagrangian right. Okay. So, if we were to like, let us say there is no optimality gap or there is no duality gap right, then you can very well uh, maximize this Lagrange tool and the optimal solution in that case would turn out to be or optimal value of g star would be the same as uh, the primal optim, uh, objective value right. So, in today's lecture we are going to extend uh, the fx gf that we have looked at in the previous lecture and again like this is not specific to just the fi uh, fixed time. Uh, convergent algorithms, but we are basically going to extend gradient flows for constraint optimization. So, the idea for to like for today's lecture, we would be focusing on extending FXTSGF for equality constraint optimization problems. and uh, also for saddle point problems. So, eventually as I said uh, meanwhile you can analyze and maybe also formulate new algorithms in continuous time everything needs to be discretized right the implementation needs to be discretized. So, in the so, in that spirit we are going to be looking at something called augmented Lagrangian methods. Also known as the method of multipliers. And without going too much into the theory of the method of multipliers, we would be looking at uh, the mechanism of convergence for method of multipliers. And in the subsequent lecture, this would also give rise to something called ADMN, which is alternating direction method of multipliers. That's so alternating direction method of multipliers. So the way this ADMN algorithm is set up, this would actually uh, give you the glimpse of the first version of the distributed optimization algorithm or distributed optimization problem that we are going to be looking at. So, we would start with something called dist at least motivate distributed ADMN and that would be a nice departure for a general distributed optimization problem. Uh, the next uh, 2 to 3 lectures will focus around uh, Augmented Lagrangian methods, ADMM, distributed ADMM, and then we would sort of 
to start with something called distributed optimization. Okay. So just to briefly recap, if we are looking to minimize an unconstrained, like if it's an unconstrained, constrained optimization problem, let's say your f of x is strongly convex. So we def def designed something uh, called f x t s g f, which was given as minus Okay, something like this. But what if if you have a constrained version of this thing, right? So let's say you want to uh, minimize f of x, but subject to some equality constraint. And how can we use, uh, or how can we design something equivalent of the unconstrained optimization, like unconstrained optimization algorithm, or the FX TSGF that we looked at, right? So we are going to def, uh, look at something called uh, conjugate of a function. So definition conjugate it is also called uh, Fenchel dual of the function. And it is usually denoted by this f star. Okay. So I am going to be using this type of star for dual and the usual f asterisk for the optimal value of f. So just be uh, aware of the notations. So I am going to be using this kind of star for the uh, Fenchel dual or the conjugate of a function. And it is defined to be Okay, so maximize this particular quantity. Like so, and y sort of comes in here. So, what kind of function is this? Is this a convex function, or a concave function, or we cannot say anything? So, first of all, f star is a function of x or y. Y, right? So, what kind of in the on the right hand side, what kind of uh, for a given x, what kind of functions in y do you have? An affine function in y, right? So, if you have affine functions in y, that that may look something like these, right? And so on. And I'm doing what? Pointwise maximization. And pointwise maximization gives me. Basically, create basically gives you a convex function, right? So, point if I look at the pointwise maximization of this, it would look something like this, right? And this is a convex function. So, regardless of what your f f your f is, I mean, f may be convex, may not be convex. Your uh, Fenchel dual of f or the conjugate of f that is always convex. Okay, so this is always convex. Is this clear? So, for a different f of x, you will have different uh, like hyperplane, right? So, I am just checking the point wise maximum. So, these different uh, straight lines is basically given by different values of x and therefore, therefore you will have different offset, right, f of x. Okay. For different values, so we fix a y, right? So f star y is what we are trying to find. Now, different values of x will give me different uh, hyperplanes, and I'm doing point-wise maximization, and that's how I'm evaluating, right? So point-wise maximization is what I'm evaluating. So the bottom line is this particular uh, uh, conjugate of f that is always convex. I mean, even if your f is, I mean, not convex to start with, right? And this is something that we had already seen in the context of Lagrange dual as well, right? 
so this this was always a concave problem or uh, concave problem because this time it's a minimization over like if i look at the look at the definition of this function right it's a fine it's a fine in lambda and nu so the same idea holds uh, but this time it's minimization so min point wise minimization is basically gives you a concave function so this is always a concave function even if your original function f is or the original problem is not convex to start with right so therefore you can that's why we look at the maximization of the lagrangian dual because it's a concave problem so for concave problem we look at the maximization uh, as an object like objective and for uh, convex problem we look at minimization as the objective right okay so so i'm going to uh, state a theorem again without uh, most likely this will be part of your homework uh, in the theorem is so if your function f is mu strongly convex then the conjugate conjugate of f so f star is 1 over mu smooth okay so like we had l smoothness when we talk about a function being mu strongly convex and l smooth so if f is just strongly convex then f star is uh, 1 over mu smooth so the smoothness co uh, modulus is going to be 1 over mu and f star is in any way we know f star is always going to be convex so it's not just smooth it's also going to be convex but it's all it's going to be one over mu smooth okay the second result is if f is l smooth and convex then f star is one over l strongly convex So if I if I do not include the convexity of f, f star is going to be convex no matter what, right? But by including this convexity and l smoothness, we can guarantee that the f star is going to be strongly convex. In fact, the modulus of strong convexity is going to be one over l. So it kind I mean basically the corresponding coefficients kind of uh, uh, they become reciprocal of the original model. Okay, so the smoothness becomes strong convexity and strong convexity becomes smoothness and so. So that this is one, this particular result, uh, I will probably have you guys prove this in your homework, but that is the idea. So let's look at the equality constraint optimization problem. In fact, linear equality constraint. And let's try to motivate why we are looking at something like uh, uh, Fenchel dual or the uh, conjugate of a function. So, so we consider this problem minimize Sinharan f of x subject to quality constraint of this form ax equal to b. Okay. So this is your primal problem. So what is the Lagrangian for this problem? L x nu and that is going to be f of x plus nu transpose a x minus b. Okay. And if I try to define the Lagrangian dual which is g nu that is going to be minimum over x f of x. Okay. All right. So I can expand this and I can write this as f of x plus a transpose mu transpose x minus mu transpose b. Okay. Is mu transpose b a function of x? No, right? So I can just simply write this as minus new transpose b plus minimum over x okay. 
So minimum over x is same as minimum of a function is same as maximum over the negative of the function, right? So this Okay. And what is this quantity by definition? This is conjugate of f evaluated at minus a transpose b. Okay. Is this clear? I think it was right before. Wait, let's see. Minus, yeah. Yeah. So this, this is your, so you are going to be getting a negative value here, right? first and then you are going to be making negative of it so that the same the same value of a so this is fine but if you cannot take the negative sign instead directly no so you can take it the argument would be the argument or argmax would be the same mm. but then like let's say this evaluates to 3 mm. negative of this if i try to maximize it becomes negative 3 right and i have to change it back to 3 i mean because it's it's a value that i'm trying to add right so Okay, so g nu becomes negative nu transpose b minus f star a transpose nu. f star is what type of function? Convex, right? Negative of convex is and g we know is always a concave function, right? So, so now you see that there is a connection between the uh, Lagrange dual and the conjugate of the function, right? So let's say if, if I give you an f and I mean if I give you an f and you know how to evaluate its uh, or let's say the closed form expression for the f star is known, then you wouldn't have to I mean then you can what you can do is you can simply try and look look to maximize this g nu, right? So essentially you can pretty much work with this uh, unconstrained optimization problem which becomes a maximization problem of a concave function. Is this clear? So if, if let us say you happen to know the closed form expression for f star given an f, if a closed form expression for f star is known then you can simply evaluate g nu and the dual problem is basically maximize with respect to nu g nu right and this is an unconstrained optimization problem. So you can pretty much treat like if you happen if you happen to know the conjugate of a function you can pretty much treat this as a as an unconstrained optimization problem and directly look to maximum like basically maximize this uh, dual right. So what kind of algorithm can achieve that? So like if I were to design an fxts kind of thing what would be my x new dot? So first of all, it's it's now. I mean, I'm going to be def, def, defining it in terms of new dot, right? Because I'm going to be running this algorithm for the dual variable. So new dot is going to be. Yeah. So instead of minus gradient, it will now be plus gradient, right? Because it's a maximization problem. So you are going in the direction of maximum increase. So this would be gradient g new. Okay. So the equality constraint optimization problem again if you happen to know the corresponding uh, conjugate of the function you can treat this as an unconstrained optimization problem. In fact it is a maximization problem now so you run this particular algorithm with uh, without the minus sign right. So is this clear? So let us look at uh, one example and let us try and evaluate uh, the potential dual of a function f, right. So let us 
so the primal optimization problem is minimize with respect to x of so it's a simple quadratic program let's also assume that q is positive definite so it's it's a uh, at least strongly convex kind of quadratic program subject to so can you try and evaluate the uh, dual of this function dual of x so this is your f of x right so what is the lagrangian here again it's going to be simply half x transpose qx okay and g nu is going to be minimization with respect to x so that's going to be negative nu transpose b and we know that it's going to be minus f star of a transpose nu right minus a transpose nu where f of x is of x transpose qx plus c transpose x okay so if i try and find g nu directly from here which is going to be minimization with respect to x so that means i so this is what i am trying to find and this is an unconstrained minimization with respect to x so for that i need to set the derivative of this lagrangian with respect to x to 0 right that would be the condition for optimality so what is the derivative with respect to x for the first term qx plus c let's call it qx star just to show that it's right or x star turns out to be okay now let's substitute this back and try to find g nu so which is a function which is going to be a function only of nu right so g nu would then be half q inverse c plus okay so you see a bunch of term in terms of a transpose nu right so all you need to do is you need to write this in a form and then you would be able to find the f star of this thing right and if you rearrange the terms uh, let me directly write this or do you guys want to work it out but if you rearrange the term it turns out that f star of minus a transpose nu is essentially minus half c plus a transpose nu transpose q inverse not minus half this is a half and this basically gives you what f star y would be and so f star y turns out to be half c minus y transpose q inverse c minus y for this particular like function f okay so for quadratic problems or quadratic programs of this form or for maybe similar analytical functions sometimes you may have the closed form expression of f star directly known so you can say right i mean use it right as it is and 
directly work with the uh, Lagrangian dual and it becomes a gradient ascent problem on the Lagrangian dual. Is that clear? So that is how you can uh, work with constrained optimization problems, equality constrained optimization problems. We have not looked at how to sort of include uh, inequality constrained optimization problems, but equality constrained optimization problems using uh, the conjugate of functions you can uh, you can work it out. The other class of problem that we looked at was the saddle point problems. So, so the problems are of this saddle point problems are of this form. So, you have max min let us say kind of problem you want to maximize with respect to one variable, minimize with respect to another variable a function f of x ok. And we say x star z star is a saddle point if So then we say that x star z star is a basically a saddle point for every x and z. Do you see this, this kind of problem anywhere? At least in the context of the course, I mean in this course, uh, have you come across any problem of this form? What about this Lagrangian? You are trying to minimize with respect to x and maximize with respect to lambda and nu, right? So, it is essentially a saddle point problem on the Lagrangian directly. So, instead of directly let us say uh, I mean to try instead of trying to take this route of uh, uh, conjugate of f, I can also look at it as a saddle point problem on the original Lagrangian right where I am trying to minimize with respect to x and maximize with respect to nu. Let us say we are still focusing on the equality constraint optimization problem. So, minimize with respect to x and maximize with respect to nu and that is what I am trying to find. So, I am trying to find x star and nu star right which is the saddle point of the Lagrangian. That is one way you can look at it this look at this kind of problem. A lot of optimization problems I mean by themselves are essentially a saddle point problem. So, in game theory for instance two player games right it is a maximum kind of objective. So, there you naturally I mean see the saddle point problems. So, how like if you if you were to evaluate the saddle points. So, how can we sort of modify uh, fxts gf kind of thing. So, so, the idea is now, so we want to come up with equivalent gradient flows for solving saddle point problems. Right? And in terms of the application of saddle point problems, so so, one example is uh, when working with Lagrangians right. For equality constraint optimization problem let us say. For equality. Or another example is two player game. where you have you naturally have this max min or min max kind of problem ok. So, if you have something like this. Uh, so, how do we come up with an equivalent gradient flow for solving the saddle point and again as I said I mean we would be looking at uh, the fixed time conversion gradient flow, but it is not specific to fixed time as I said I mean fixed time is essentially uh, basically reparameterization of your original gradient flow. So, if it works for uh, the fixed time conversion gradient flow it would also work for simple gradient flows as well it just that convergence would be faster with this ok. So, quick some assumptions. So, if, if you were to use fixed time conversion gradient flows uh, I mean functions should either either satisfy pair inequality or they should be strongly convex or they should be uh, strictly convex with hessian like positive definite right. 
in case of saddle point problems, f cannot be convex in both the arguments. Otherwise, it becomes different. like it for the for the variable in which we are trying to minimize this function. You assume f to be convex in that variable and concave in the other. Then this Maxman problem makes sense. So we are going to be assuming f x c is locally strictly convex strictly concave concave in its arguments. So meaning it is it's basically strictly convex in x and strictly concave in z with we are going to be assuming that the so this is going to be or rather uh, for every x and z let us say we assume that this is positive definite and because it is strictly concave in the other argument this is going to be negative definite ok. So, we assume that this is this is the setup. So, then if these two conditions are satisfied then you can say it is strictly I mean strictly con convex strictly concave. I mean the other way around need not be true as we have already seen in the context of uh, let us say x function like x to the 4 hessian is not always positive definite right, but it is strictly convex. So, so we assume that this is true. So, essentially the hessian equivalent hessian is going to be invertible ok. So, what do we need to do if we if we were to solve this problem? So, it 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 should look like a gradient descent in x and gradient ascent in z right, because we are trying to minimize with respect to x and maximize with respect to z. So, the kind of algorithm that you would end up designing would look something like this. So, so first of all ok let me define this capital X which is going to be x and z and gradient of f ok. So, we define this new gradient vector which is basically concatenation of the gradients with respect to x and z. But for the z vector we are going to have a negative of it right because we want to run gradient ascent on z. So, the equivalent uh, for x dot is going to be where uh, this is nothing but the hessian the f is nothing but your hessian which is again with p greater than 2 and q in but you can see because we have defined gradient here with the negative sign hessian of f is invertible is what I mean we can because here it is it is going to be negative right. Let us say there are no cross terms. So, these this is positive definite this is negative definite, but then uh, I mean it is it is invertible is all you can say with because of the assumptions that we made. So, this inverse exists and this gradient f is actually defined in terms of uh, I mean instead of using the gradient with respect to x and z and concatenating it there is a negative sign here because we want to run a gradient ascent on the z variable. So, this particular uh, this particular gradient flow. So, this so converges in fixed time. for the saddle point problem. 
if let's say the problem was strongly convex strongly concave to start with then you wouldn't even need this right so then it would have simply been this particular term had the problem it's strongly convex strongly concave something that we like we have already looked at in the context of strongly convex functions only that if we were to minimize strongly convex function then uh, then you don't need the hessian inverse right hessian inverse is needed when you work with strictly concave strictly convex kind of setting so again uh, proving convergence convergence in fixed time is going to be uh, one of your homework problems but uh, this is this is pretty much the modification that you need to do yeah so you assume that the saddle point exists i mean if you are assuming say strict convexity string con concavity saddle point would exist but in general i mean like yeah you assume that saddle point exists i mean the kind of assumptions that we are making like strict convexity strict con concavity would guarantee existence of a in fact unique saddle point if you but yeah so well i mean in this case we i mean we have the global kind of definition here yeah i mean we it's called locally strictly i mean this particular definition is called locally strictly convex but i mean it's we assume that it's true for every x and z so but then it's locally strictly convex strictly concave if this is true in some ball around here yeah, in some ball around your x and z so so for now you can just i mean for the sake of simplicity assume it's globally uh, strictly convex strictly concave so what would be a good let's say if you want to show that this particular optimization algorithm or this particular dynamical system converges to equilibrium in a fixed time what would be a good choice for uh, lyapunov candidate so what is a good choice of lyapunov candidate when you when you work with strictly convex functions half uh, norm gradient right so even here you are going to be working with this when when you solve the homework problem this is the lyapunov candidate that you are going to be working with okay and you would need to show that v dot is less than equal to some c1 v to the alpha 1 and a c2 v to the alpha 2 with alpha 1 uh, less than 1 or an alpha 2 greater than 1 then you would you would be able to show that this uh, convergence in a fixed time so this is what you need you would need to show <laughs>